Hey dudes, welcome to Splat from the Past, the only 80s themed horror and sci-fi show where things can get totally radical. Now today, I will be welcoming a very nice lady I met on Facebook um, not too long ago. Her name is Pamela Betsy Hodges. Um, we have lots of mutual friends and um, I, one of us friended each other. Uh, but she's a nice lady from Canada, and she's got a uh, trio called the Pamela Hodges Trio. I believe they're into folk music and such, and I'm having her on the show today to talk about that stuff. And I'm also going to talk to her about um, a subject that has been uh, pondering my mind for a while now. <clears throat> I've been doing this podcast two years. I've interviewed a lot of Canadians and they are just so not easily offended, and they love a good, dirty joke, and they are so free-spirited, and I want to know why, so I'm going to talk to Pamela about that today as well. So, uh, yeah, here is my interview with Pamela Betsy Hodges. Hey, Pamela. Hi, Tommy. How are you? I am great. How are you? I'm really good. Thank you. Well, thank you for coming on today. I'm happy to. Oh, that's wonderful and stuff. So You're wonderful for asking me. Oh, thank you. So, uh, you're a musician. I am. So, uh, did your interest in music um, start early on? Well, yeah. It, uh, when I look back, it seems to be forever. I look back and it's like I started <clears throat> when um, my uncle had me singing into my skipping rope. I was like three years old, maybe two years old. Mm -hmm. And it's just always been. It's one of those things. And he would set up chairs in my parents' basement. Mm -hmm. And I would just, uh, you know, always do it. And the writing for me came later. Um, the first song I, I ever wrote, I was 11, and I wrote it, um, actually when my dad had died, mm -hmm. oh. and I wrote it as a prayer, I think it was the first prayer that ever really meant something to me, personally, and it just, uh, came, and I wrote it, and it just sort of flowed. The music came out at the same time, and I still sing it today, although we've, my trio has sort of jazzed it up a bit. The chords are more mature, mm -hmm. but yeah, it just, it's always been for me. Wow, oh, that's beautiful. Um, uh, what kind of music did you grow up listening to? Oh, I think all kinds. My parents always had, like, well, it was in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So, um, we always had big band music. I had a great uncle who did a radio show, um, a live from, we had Victoria Hall in Montreal. Mm -hmm. So it was, um, he did a live show that he wrote for CBC Music. And so that was always uh, an integral part of my growing up. Um, but that was, so a little jazz, a little... Uh, well, a lot of adult contemporary like pop, you know, big. Anne Murray was a big deal to mm -hmm. me personally. Do you know Anne Murray? I know who she is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. You know, rock music, every a little bit of everything, I guess. Nice. Do you like Neil Young? Yeah. Yeah, love Neil Young. He is such a genius. Yeah. His writing, <clears throat> his, his lyric. Eh? Yeah, I mean, he he lives in my hometown of San Mateo, California, and mm -hmm. he can just be walking around, people spot him, and he doesn't care if people recognize him. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Because yeah, we're all, we're all hearts. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. Mm. I, I love Canadian rock. I love Rush. And mm. Triumph and uh, Moxie and um, Pat Travers, April Wine. Like, there's so many good Canadian hard rock bands. Mm. Is it Stephen Lang in April Wine? 
I know Miles Goodwin is. I don't know the names of every single member of the band. I should, though. I don't know names very well either. I think it might be Stephen Lang. Anyway, his 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 aunt, I think, was my uh, seamstress of my mother's. This is funny, these little stories. <laughs> oh, you're right. Steve Lang, yes. Steve Lang, yeah. He's dead now. Yes. Yeah. Just in the last 10 years sometime. Yeah. Yeah. 2017. Oh, two yeah. years. Yeah, two years. Go ahead. Yeah. So I said 10 years so that I wouldn't be an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but go ahead. What happened? Uh, it's so nice to talk to you. <laughs> You're very genuine. Oh, thank you. But, mm-hmm. but, um... So you grew up on all that stuff and stuff. What 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 decade would this be? Oh, well, I'm fifty. You're fifty. I was born in 1969. Sixty-nine, my favorite number. Oh, <laughs> I bet. <laughs> <laughs> wow, and so um, so you're listening to all that stuff, you know. And then did you uh, start um, playing instruments early on? I did. Um, well, piano, not that I'm a piano player, you know what I mean? I use it as a tool for my writing, but my trio puts it all together with a piano player and um, a wonderful flute player who, you know, who is with me. But um, I played piano when I was little and then flute when I was in high school and then trumpet more trumpet when I was out of high school and then it kind of left <laughs> <laughs> after a while. So the singing really has been, uh, I think, what I what I really stayed with, you know, mm-hmm. most of my life, all of my life. So did you, and your, did you and your friends join bands? Um, not really. I think, well... I did musicals more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, more, <clears throat> more shows like that. It's where I met my husband in a show we did together. So you did theater? Yeah. Nice. I did theater too in high school. Did you? Yeah. Do you remember what what you did? Well, I did stage crew, uh, props. Yeah. Stage crew and props because I auditioned. Okay, I can't sing and I can't dance. So I. I attempted to do that uh, for the Sound of Music my sophomore year, and so that I just, good. yeah, I just ended up just doing props and stuff, and it was better. And oh my God, I gotta tell you, uh, there was a girl that was um, doing all the shows, and uh, backstage she used to give all the boys blowjobs. Yes. And well, she, she, she was talented in her own way. Exactly. And I was lucky enough my senior year to get one from her finally. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So this is what you remember. That's one of the things I remember. <laughs> I remember a lot of waiting around and hearing the same songs over mm. and over again. And it's so fucking annoying to work on yeah. a musical because you keep hearing the same songs over and over again. Yes. And you can't wear you can't wear earplugs. You have to like no, be, because you have to be a hundred percent alert and there. Exactly, you have to be alert, and it's just insane though. But I so I stayed away from it for a long time, and then just before my car accident, I did a play where I got to do it again, and mm-hmm. I missed it a lot. And I I actually would rather be doing that full time right now, but unfortunately, I'm not in the circumstances where I can do that. Wow. What was your car accident? Oh, I was was out drinking with this guy who I thought was my friend, and I fell asleep in in the passenger side. He fell asleep at the wheel. We ended up in the middle of the road. We got out okay, but then the car collided with ours, and then we, you know, got hit. And I got the worst of the injuries. I... What happened to you? Let's see. I broke my leg in seven places. I got... I already had, like, gallstones already building up. Um, I had a mild, mild heart attack, fractured hand, um, some teeth missing, several other things. Oh, my goodness. And I was in a coma for 30 days. 
Wow. I woke up on my mom's birthday. Wow. Yeah. So and you definitely had work to do. <laughs> yeah, I was, I, I was, I just, I was in the hospital for six months, and I immediately went back to comedy because I was doing stand up wow. for years before that. I went back to it. And then I started getting into the, the convention circuit, and that led to my podcast. I started here uh, once we got a place up here because we were homeless for a while. Mm. Yeah. I've Amazing. Had, I've had a lot of stuff happen to me the last few years, but most of my life has been a ride like that. Yeah. Wow. So you've used, uh, like... You've had a lot of stuff happen, and then you've used it. Yes. To, like, you've channeled a lot of um, that pain mm -hmm. into, like, you've used it for gift in a way, eh? I have. Yeah. You know, I it, it. the accident gave me a gift that, and I, that I didn't know I have. So much confidence. Mm -hmm. I just am just so proud that I have got that I have accomplished what I've accomplished in just four years, and I got a lot more on the way. Yeah, amazing! Wow. Yeah, but um, so so after so did did you go to uh, college to study music? I did. I'm not <clears throat> an academic. I'm not. Um, my gift is definitely not uh, in that area at all. So I went, I went to university after, um, we have Stage Up, Do you, have you heard of that? Stage Up, no. So it's two to three years after high school in Canada. And mm. uh, so I went, I went through that in Montreal after, after high school. And I really struggled there. Um, so I did that in music. And um, I switched into drama, and you know I did the best I could. Um, and I think I—I I mean I learned quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, but I couldn't do very. Well. I just didn't do very well in the in the theory aspects of music. Um, so I couldn't go very far. And then I got into university. Um, as a mature student, um, <laughs> whatever that means, <laughs> and I, mm -hmm, I didn't do very well again. But I was trying to, you know, get the the lessons and just do as much as I could in terms of, you know, learning as much as I could in terms of the the, the vocal coaching and and you know learn from the the best of the the people, you know. Um, and, and the, the, the other students and like, just get what I could there, you know, mm -hmm. and, um, <clears throat> which was great. Um, but I guess frustrating, eh, for, for the people around me. Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> However, um, I met some wonderful people and, um, anyway, did my best. But um, got out at the same time as soon as I could. Everything's a balance, even in that. Yeah. And um, um, so I left after about two years. And I just kept... What, I guess what I came to was I, I wasn't getting what I... I wasn't being able... I wasn't able to communicate what I wanted to, to audiences in terms of what I was, ex what was expected of me, right? Right. So in the classical training I was receiving, um, in the opera, you know, um, program there at McGill, I was, um, expected to, you know, in that training, um, I wasn't, you know, picking up on what I, I just wasn't getting it, right? Right. And so, 
you left. How could I communicate to the audiences if I wasn't getting it? If I wasn't connecting with that type of music, how on earth could I, could I do it? How could I deliver? So I started realizing I need to write what I want to express. And that's when I started really writing um, my own music. And so that's when I started really writing and really performing. And my husband really helped me with that. And he showed me that I could, I could actually hold my own concerts and perform and do my own thing and, you know, yeah, and do it. So I started and um, I was terrified. But I realized that's, that's life, eh? Yeah. And, and I started realizing mm. I could do it. And um, there was a handful of people. There still are. It's like a handful of people that come to our, our evenings. But we all love it. It's a, it's a love fest. <laughs> and it's really special. We call it our sacred self evenings. And we hold them at churches. And it's a healing, you know, situation. And people come and, um, you know, hear the music. And it's really, really beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it's very come as you are. It's exactly what we're talking about. Um, and they listen. And it's all walks of life come. Um, mm -hmm. You know, they hopefully are uplifted. They relax. It's a very, you know, just be situation. And, you know, it's all about as we work through whatever truths we're living through in our lives, right? Right. And uh, that's what it is. <laughs> How long have you been married now? Um, 20, 20, uh, that's a good question. 24 years, 1995. Is that 24 years? That's 24, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. My husband's an academic. He has his PhD in research psychology. So he's brilliant in that way. He's... Okay, he won't like it if I have an orgasm on the air. <laughs> oh, oh. Well, he, you know, he'd find it interesting, right? Would he? <laughs> uh, I don't He'd think. Laugh. I don't think he would. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but uh, you're wonderful. Oh, thank you. You're wonderful. I have to tell you, your invitation to join you on your podcast uh, has come as. Um, a beautiful gift at this particular time in my life. Um, oh. Just thank you. My mother, um, who I'm very close with, um, and I haven't talked about this much, you know, actually, um, she's on dialysis. And oh. um, she's had a very complicated um, life with diabetes and... Yeah. Um, we're very, very, very close. She's just my best friend in life. Um, you know, she's a person that is also very prayerful and very uh, just, you know, you'd love her too, actually. I don't know if you'd ever want to talk with her. She's wonderful. Um, anyway, she has trouble with her energy and, mm -hmm. um, you know, she's just a gift in this world. And... She, anyway, so she's, yeah, on dialysis right now. And also I've been a stay-at-home mother and, you know, to my one daughter who's, well, she's grown. She's 19 now, but, yeah. so, you know, my nearly nine-year-old girl and, you know, a six-year-old boy and this family life is the main stuff that we've, you know, been about for all these years and, Although my writing has been, you know, ongoing all this time. Um, when my daughter was 10, we got into fostering babies. Mm -hmm. And we ended up adopting these two littles. And we said, you know, we suck. We, we just absolutely suck at uh, fostering because we ended up keeping the two. Yeah. Um, but we, you know, so to be asked to talk about my music is a blessing and a privilege. 
privilege. And I'm just, you know, I, I don't use those words lightly. So just thank you so much. It's really a gift. Oh, of course. You know, I'm going through a lot of stuff, too, with my mother. Um, Are you? Yeah, really bad stuff. And I'm just praying every day that it, just everything comes together. It's just uh, been terrible. And, uh, and my brother's going through a lot, too. But I'm just keeping my head up and just doing my thing, you know. You know, I do my podcast and I go, you know, break up a fight and then go back and do another. It's just really terrible. Yeah. Well, we can pray for you, too. We we'll can definitely keep you in your purse. Of course. What we do. If you read my writing, you'll see. It's all in it. <laughs> you'll see. <laughs> so uh, have, you, have you ever opened up for big musicians? No, it's a dream. I mean, that's what I would love. I know we could, you know, it's one of those things, you know, when you know you can, but you mm. just haven't gotten there. Yeah. Yeah. You have the heart and you know you could, and you have to polish. The flute player in my trio just retired from 30 years in the Ottawa Symphony. So she's wonderful. And, uh. you know, we have that caliber. And we have an album coming out. It's our first one as a trio together. And it's not ready. It's still in process. It's going for mastering in the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, it's going to be called Something Better. And we just don't, it's not out yet, but that's coming. So you might be our, you know, the one who brought us to the public. I hope so. That, that would, I hope, uh, that uh, becomes very successful for you. Thank you. Yeah, I mean, you, you, it's all um, uh, originals, or do you have any covers on there? It's all originals. I've written everything. Nice. Yeah, nice. my trio has has arranged everything. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Yeah. So I wanted to ask you. Uh, about something that I've been pondering for a long time now. I've interviewed so many Canadians on this show, and they are the nicest people. Mm. And mm. one thing I have noticed, they love my raunchy sense of humor. They are, like, mm. so free-spirited and not easily offended. Why are the Canadians like that? Mm. Mm. It's a good question. I don't know. Is it the, I don't know. And I'm supposed to answer that? Yeah. I'm the rep? <laughs> um, You're the first Canadian I've talked to in a while, so that's why right. I had to ask. So, is it because we intrinsically know there's no time for anything else? Hmm. Maybe. You know, why bother being upset? about such things. Could be that. It could be um, they just have no shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because why bother, right? Right. Because, you know, there's no point. I guess when you live in a country full of snow and ice, you know, it's hard to be angry about something. <laughs> it's so hot right now, though. Oh, it is? It might be similar to where you are. I don't know. Yeah, it's hot over here. Is it right now? Yeah, well, it's it's early in the morning. It'll, it'll take a while for it to get hotter. Mm. Yeah, it's, even, it's humid here even right now. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. Um, I think we just, you know, we're just, just trying to keep it simple, right? Trying to be smart about life. Right. So try to, try not to be, try not to be an asshole. I don't want to be the one Canadian to say, yeah, just try to be. Try to be 
kind, right? Right. So, I don't know. Because it shouldn't be a hard question. Yeah. But, like, every, I mean, do you know any Canadians that are offended easily? Well, sure. Right? Because yeah. it's just people. I mean, it so does, people it, it does are exist. are going to be. Right. It does exist. Oh, yeah. But, like. People, anywhere you go. Yeah, I also think, too, because I interview Canadian actors and stuff, you have to be, you know, very, you know, ha- tolerant when it, comes, mm. when it comes to dirty stuff for the kind of, um, you know, movies or songs you sing or something like that, too, you know? Mm-hmm. I think that has something to do with it, too. Mm. Yeah. The songs that I sing, like, if you're thinking, I don't know if you're asking me that. No, no, I'm just saying... You're just making a comment, eh? In general, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, in general. Because I'm thinking the kinds of songs that I... Sing, like, you're bringing me into it <laughs> right now. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking what I sing is... Like, I'm always hoping to heal, like, like, bring... You know, to bring the sacred element into it. And to, to hope that... Do all to bring hope, you know? I want to... I really want people to feel better, you know, mm-hmm. in general, in general, too. Yeah. So, yeah. So mm-hmm. there's a game that I like to play with guests, and how this works is I ask you a question, you answer it, and then you ask me that same question, and I answer it. Okay. Okay. Pamela, are you ticklish? Yes. Sometimes. <laughs> Are you ticklish? Oh, I am baby ticklish. Yes. Um, <laughs> is your belly button an innie or an outie? It's an innie. Is your belly button an innie or an outie? I have an outie. Oh. It's very cute, by the way. <laughs> yes. Um, what color are your toenails painted? They're pink. Nice. I oh, like what them. color are your toenails painted? They have clear polish on them. <laughs> I had them uh, blue-green for Easter back in April. Hmm. Yeah. Do you do them yourself? Oh, yes. I used to get them done, but now it's just every salon you go to is expensive. Mm. It's, it's, I agree. Yeah. It's just, it's, it's going up all the time. Mm-hmm. Here's my favorite question. Um, is there a stinky smell that makes you gag? Well, most of them. <laughs> what? Most of them. Most of them. <laughs> Stinky smell that makes you gag. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I had really bad athlete's foot for a while. Oh. For like six months. Oh. They didn't give me a, re- a reason. Uh, I didn't give them a reason to like me very much, so they didn't change my socks during the last month I was in there, and that's what happened. Oh, that's horrible. I was just very, very, you know, grumpy from the medication and everything, and I was just, I didn't give them much of a reason to like me, so that's what happened. It's it's sad, eh, the way they treat people. Yeah, it's pretty bad. Mm. It's pretty bad. Mm -hmm. I, I noticed we have three mutual friends on Facebook, Lisa Lingua. Yeah, I don't actually, I don't know them in life. So you're fans of their work? Yeah, like, I, I mean, you know, on Facebook. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've interviewed Lisa. She is so awesome. She's a lot of fun. Yes? Oh, good for you. Abby Haggard, she's been on, too. She's oh. so funny. I know. She's amazing. 
And Lori Jacobson, she's been on twice. Oh, how wonderful. Yeah. Oh, she's got a dirty mind, too. <laughs> <laughs> I think in this world, eh, when you've lived for a while, it's impossible to not, like, have a sense of it somehow. I mean, how do you... You try not to live there, mm-hmm. but you got to know it. You have a sense of it, eh? Yes. Yeah. I love how you keep saying, hey, that's so Canadian. Oh, I know. It's just there. <laughs> what can I do? <laughs> I'm not going to say sorry for it, though. <laughs> you don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's like music to my ears. Oh, good. <laughs> <laughs> I've got jokes for you. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> You know the old nursery rhyme about the uh, the old woman? She lived in a shoe. She had so many kids, she didn't know what to do. Yes, by that woman. <laughs> what did her right leg say to her left leg? Oh, boy. I don't know. Nothing. They never met. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love that joke. Uh you know why that joke is funny? I mean, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have to get out more. <laughs> <laughs> why do men like to marry virgins? I don't know. Because they can't stand criticism. That joke is misogynistic. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Good, I did my job. <laughs> uh, I'm not I'm not a misogynist in any way. No no. No no. Yeah. You're special. You're a very special one. Oh, why is that? Well, because you have you're deep. You have a deeper soul than a lot of people. Oh, that's very nice of you to say. Yeah. Well, it's true. I, I agree to an extent, but I, I'm not everybody's cup of tea. <laughs> so you're going to argue that? <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't be everyone's cup of tea. No. You, you know. Only, only, who is? only people who are like in the mainstream masses, maybe. <laughs> well, the masses, it's, it, that's a toughie. <laughs> yeah, I call them the asses. Well, I'm not going to, I'm not going to look at your president. I didn't want to go there, but you know. <laughs> and then let's not look, let's not look. I say look at your president and then don't look. I call the masses. Away now. Yeah, I call the masses the asses. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Let's see. Um, I'm, try, I'm trying to think of some more. Uh, oh, my Cinderella. I don't know how you tell jokes. I can't. I get confused and I, I forget punchlines. I admire, you know, the silliest of jokes. You know, if you're able to stay on track and tell them. So you did stand up for a long time. Oh, yeah, 13 years, and I've been taking a break because up here in Redding, California, there's really nowhere to go to perform it. So I've been taking a break, and I just focus on being funny on this podcast. Yeah. So maybe it's a, it's a godsend day. It's like a nice thing, in a way. Yeah. It's good. A bear and a rabbit are taking a shit. <laughs> a bear and a rabbit are taking a shit in the woods. The bear says to the rabbit, excuse me, sir, do you have a problem with shit sticking to your fur? The rabbit says no. So the bear wiped his ass with the rabbit. Oh, yes. I've heard that one. You know that one? Yeah. (laughs) That's one of my favorites. I must have been, I don't know, in the woods somewhere. (laughs) 
You probably saw it. Right, I probably saw that one. <laughs> uh, oh my god. So where's your husband right now? He's with my little one, one of the little ones at the park. Okay, so he's probably going to find this amusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. Do you guys have a healthy sex life? Oh, yeah. Everything's great. Mm -hmm. Good. Is he older or younger than you? He's a bit older. He's 15 years older. Wow. Mm-hmm. Well, no wonder. No wonder. Yeah. <laughs> what? Oh, well, that means no wonder that he'd find an, an orgasm, you know, on the air to be interesting. Oh! I don't know. <laughs> it's all... It's just, I think I married my best friend. We we're very close. Mm -hmm. And it's just, uh, it's just a blessing. Like we met and it's one of those things. I don't know. It's a, like a, a, a divine thing. We just met and knew and all those years ago. Mm-hmm. How long overall have you two been together? Pardon? How long have you two overall been together other than the 24-year marriage? We met in 93. So that's 26 years. Yeah. Boy, it sucks getting older. You know? <laughs> yeah. Can you, can, you, uh, give me, can you give me a few bars of singing? I'd love to hear your voice. Well, if you go on my page, you can hear some singing. <laughs> my music page. What are your hobbies and interests besides singing? Well, cooking. cooking. I like cooking quite a bit. Although I don't get a lot of time for it. So, but I, that's mostly it. I don't do a lot of other much else. Yeah, I just, m movies are my life. I can't breathe without movies. Mm, I do like movies. We just watched a fun one, actually. I'm trying to think of what it was called. Oh, Fighting With My Family. Have you seen that? <laughs> no, but I, it's, I see that every day. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but it's called Fighting With My Family, but it's not what you think. It's, um, oh, it's a wrestling you know, based story, mm -hmm. and Dwayne Johnson is in it. The Rock, yeah. Yeah, and, um, oh, what's his name? What's his name? Vince Vaughn mm -hmm. plays a coach in it. Yeah. And I don't know who else, but anyway, it's really, it's really fun. Nice. And I like it. Maybe have a look at it. It's mm -hmm. cute. Is it a Netflix movie? Ooh, I'm not even sure now. I think so. Do you have Netflix? Yeah. Yeah, everyone's got it now. I guess, do you? I don't even know. <laughs> I guess so. Yeah, people seem to talk about it. I don't know. Sometimes I'm moving under a rock. No, I'm at home. No pun intended. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh boy. Almost there. How 
long do these interviews go for? It depends. The, my shortest interview was 15 minutes. My longest has been two hours and 30 minutes. Mm. Just depends on the guest and stuff. Mm. I've had so many wonderful guests. Mm. I should go and, and listen to some of your interviews. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my, my uh, channel is Tommy Kovac on YouTube. It's a picture of me with Robert England on the um, profile picture. Oh, fun. I'll go look. You're wonderful. I think people will feel obviously very comfortable with you. Oh. <laughs> so so what, what are your favorite movies? Oh, let me see. I love Bohemian Rhapsody. I have not seen um, I was looking forward to seeing that movie, right? And then yeah. I found out that the director uh, is Brian Singer, who's a, who's a well-known pedophile in Hollywood, and I got mad when I heard that he was still oh. working. Yeah. Oh! I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, I was mad when I heard that. Okay. okay. I didn't know that. Okay, what else? Okay, well, now I'm going to have to have a what else. <laughs> okay. Um, let me see. Walk the Line, I always liked. Walk the Line. Oh, yeah, I love that movie. Johnny Cash one? Yeah, love that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, all the Back to the Future ones. Oh, the first one is my favorite movie of all time. Really? Yes. I love the first one. It's a special. I really love the second one. The third one, I, I'm not crazy about, but I like it. The third one has always been eh for me too, but in, in later years, I've appreciated Westerns more, so I like it more than I did in 1990 when my parents took me to see it. Mm. Mm-hmm. 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 Um, I like... I mean, there's a million movies I like, but I'm, I get, I just get stymied when I try to think of any. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. What's that one? Bridges of Man- Madison County, I like. Bridges of um, Madison County. I mean. Yeah, Clint Eastwood, Merle Street. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I like anything with Melissa McCarthy. Oh, she is so damn funny. She makes me so happy. <laughs> I just love her. <laughs> I wish I would love her to play me in movies. If I ever... Oh, yeah. There's my ego. Yeah. You do look like her a little bit. I do, right? I think, something. I think you're prettier, though. Oh, thank you. <laughs> um, oh, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Mean movies. I'll tell you if I like them. <laughs> uh, have you ever seen Amadeus? <gasps> of course. Love that movie. I love it. It's one of my favorites. The original Rocky. Yeah. I don't remember it very well. Yeah. I don't um, know if it's a favorite for me. The original Superman movie is one of my favorites of oh, all time. Yeah. For sure. Um, I saw that with my dad. Jaws. Love Jaws. Jaws. Masterpiece. Titanic. Titanic. Uh, I, I, I'm not a big Titanic fan. I don't think that they've ever accurately got it right. Oh. I think, oh, I think, that makes me sad. I think the key to making a movie about the Titanic, the Titanic is don't show what happened. Show what happened after it. You know, because mm. otherwise it turns into a special effects spectacular, and mm. you know, it, and the first one made six hundred million dollars because of that. You know, mm. it just—I think it cheapened it. You know, and, that's interesting what you're saying. Yeah. So what happens after it? I don't know. So just, there's a history after it. A whole like all the people, like any of the top after. 
yeah, like I would show, you know, everyone beforehand and then talk about it after it happened and then show how it, it affected their families in the world. Mm. You know? Um, yeah, of course. In, in 1952, I believe, they made one and Robert Wagner was in it. Hmm. And it was, it, it was, it was not that good, but I, I it was slightly better than, um, the, than, um, the remake. Yeah, the princess makes sense. Right. Right? Okay? You can see that. Right. I see what you're saying. So, you know, it's just, it's, 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 it's so, I, I just don't think they've done the Titanic story right. Although I did like in Ghostbusters 2, the Titanic comes back. Mm. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that was pretty damn funny. I love the original Ghostbusters. Yes. I agree. I didn't like the remake. No, I actually didn't. I said I liked anything with Melissa McCarthy, but... Yeah. Hmm. Do you like zombie movies? Not so much. Yeah, I love zombie movies. Okay. I love... Okay. <laughs> I'm a horror and sci-fi guy. Hmm. I like thrillers more. Mm-hmm. What kind of thrillers? Hitch- Hitchcock? Yeah. Or more modern thrillers. Mm-hmm. Like from the others on. Yeah. Those are all really good. Mm-hmm. Um, do, you, oh, do you remember the first album you ever bought? Oh, it was probably a Lionel Richie kind of thing. Oh, the first love. concert I ever went to was with my dad. It was Sonny and Cher. Oh. I was five. <laughs> <laughs> I love Lionel Richie, though. Yes. Oh, yeah. I used to drive my parents insane trying to dance on the ceiling. <laughs> yes. You really did, eh? I, tr- I can I, imagine. I, could, I was only able to put one foot on the wall, and I couldn't do the other yes. and stuff, but it just it just made oh. my, my parents just cringe that I, I could have gotten hurt, you know? <laughs> yeah. I can imagine. I can just imagine, because my son would be doing stuff like that. I would get high up on the couch and jump off it like I was Superman and stuff, and they would just oh, <laughs> get mad. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's funny, because I just adored him. I yeah. mean, I still adore him, but he came about when I was younger. But I really loved him. I saw him. He opened, I think it was for Tina Turner. Mm-hmm. And my husband and I went, and... I remember sitting beside a woman I didn't know. Mm -hmm. The woman and I had a blast because we were singing, you know, at full capacity every (laughs) song. And my, you know, my husband was very quiet, but this woman and I (laughs) didn't know each other. We were just, it's like we knew each other all our lives. (laughs) Singing away. Oh, great. What a talent he is. Yeah. I, mm-hmm. he, he's been doing concerts. Well, while Richie's been doing concerts lately where he does Brick House. Because he was in the Commodores, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So he's been doing Brick House. And he didn't even sing the song. He sang backup on it. Mm. I like that. I like it. Well, I like singing it. One of the other guys in the band. Okay. Yeah. But <laughs> <laughs> he's been he's been doing it. I think that's really cool to get back to your roots like that. Yeah. And of course, you know, he does all the ballads that he started out with in the Commodores and then he does his own, you know. Mm. He's just yeah, a, I didn't know he was doing that. A talented guy. I remember he yeah. did I remember he did he did Pepsi commercials in the mid eighties. I don't even remember that. Yeah. In fact, he did one with Urkel from Family Matters. Did he? Yeah. So, he's in the back lot of Universal Studios, and they're doing they're doing a fake concert. Everyone's drinking Pepsi. They're all, like, um, you know, shouting out and having a good time. And he's singing a Pepsi version of the song Running With The Night. And... 
I don't know, he gives like a wink to this kid, and the kid ends up being Urkel at like eight or nine years old. I don't remember these things. I've seen them. I mean, they're on YouTube. You can check them out. <laughs> wow. I just don't, I don't know. I don't remember. I, I, you know, I was lucky. I have Osberger syndrome, and I have, I'm very lucky to have, you know, been brought up with such a pop culture inclined mind. Well, well, I thought I did, but you have details. Yeah, I'm very lucky. Really, really. Yeah. That's why you're doing this work. Yes, I, I know about this. I don't know much about life. I am not good at life. I never have been. But pop culture, I am very good at. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, I'm, a, I'm I don't know. I, I'm definitely, you know, I can, I do my contemplative writing. Mm-hmm. But I don't have the kind of details in pop culture that you do. Very different for me, you know. Yeah. Well. <laughs> Amazing. Mm-hmm. Um. So so um. That okay. So your first concert was Sunny and Cher. You said. Mm-hmm. And your first album was probably Lionel Richie. Stuff. I think so. Mine. Love Pat Benatar too. Ugh, I don't know. Love Pat Benatar. I've reached out to her for an interview and never heard back. Mm, you never know though. Good trying. Well, I. She inspired me because she was an opera singer first, or she at least studied it. I right. Don't know. So I thought, oh, there's hope. I don't have to, you know, I don't have to stay in the opera world. Well, I I reached out um, to him to her. And then um, a couple other podcasters I know have reached out to her, and she just, like, won't get back to them. I don't think her finger is on the pulse of the uh, podcasting community. Mm. Like, she's never, she, like, she's never heard of a podcast or something. Or she's very selective. Maybe she only does paid inquiries or something like that, mm-hmm. which is unfortunate, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. Who knows? You never know what, what or why. Yeah. I love Pat Benatar, though. Yeah, me too. Yeah, she's very talented. But the first albums I remember buying with my own birthday money when I was a kid were um, mm-hmm. Poison, Look What the Cat Dragged In, mm-hmm. and Phil Collins, No Jacket Required. Oh, yes. I, I yes. love every song on that album. It's so fucking awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Lots of great songs on that album. Mm-hmm. For sure. Yeah. I love how when you're not um, saying a, you're doing the mm-hmm, like you're, like like you're having an orgasm. <laughs> oh, is that what it sounds like? Yeah. Oh boy. Like you're having pleasure, like you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> well, I'm enjoying myself in a spiritual way. <laughs> so I didn't realize that you know. That's what it seems like, because that's how I'm living. <laughs> I'm like that at the grocery store. I'm like that everywhere. I'm like that at church. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's what my my sacred self evenings are like. Oh, I have a dark secret. I, when I was a teenager, I fi- mm. I fingered a girl in church. Did you? Yes. I'll bet that happens all the time. Oh, I don't know, but I I still can't believe I did that and got away with it to this day. Hmm. You know what? I don't think it's such a dark secret because I think, you know, I mean, God made our bodies. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, God made our minds. He made everything. So I think it's no secret. Yeah, I, I get so mad at this patriarchal shit that goes on, all this hypocrisy, you know. And, you know, they, they, and it's all said by people who have skeletons in their closet. Mm. You know? And I always think, who are they? You know what I mean? They're nobody. They're, just you, ugly. they're ugly right. people. They're ugly people. Mm. And to use Christ's name, that beautiful heart. Mm-hmm. You know, 
I, I try I try not to use too much blasphemy unless I am really, really angry that I, I'm just not thinking, you know. But I, I try not to do that because I was, I was brought up Catholic. I mean, I'm not super religious, but I am spiritual. And I, I, I just try not to do that. Mm. Because nobody is qualified to judge. <laughs> nobody is. No. No. But they do. Like, I'll give you an example. My godparents, they, they have money. They are rich. And they judge us big time. I'm sorry. Yeah, I. They know what's going on here. They don't do anything about it. They don't want to help or nothing. Not unless the price is right. Mm. It's it just it, it disgusts me. And I didn't see them for over twenty years from the time I was born till I was twenty, and not a not even to just you know write to see how I was doing or anything you know. And my mom, she distanced herself from them. Because she was just embarrassed by the fact that, you know, my dad was so blue collar and they're so white collar, you know. But it's just, I'm just at my, my rope's end here. I can't pretend that I have any love for them anymore because they just disgust me. You know, oh, my God. So I auditioned for that show, um, America's Got Talent, a couple times. Mm -hmm. And they said, and I quote, we don't watch NBC because it's run by Democrats. Isn't, it, isn't that ignorant? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Isn't that ignorant and judgmental? Mm -hmm. It's disgusting. Sorry. Yeah. What can you do? I don't know. All you can do so that your heart doesn't shrivel mm -hmm. is pray for them. you got to find that place in you. You know what I mean? Yeah. And just keep praying. That's all we can do. You keep praying. So that eventually you are just in that constant, we say God zone. We just live in the God zone. You know? Mm -hmm. Yes. And don't budge from there. And the God zone is whatever, however you, do, you um, define it personally. It's totally up to you, you know? Mm -hmm. And you define it for yourself, and you just don't budge from it, so that you are safe in there, so that you don't, so that you don't live in that anger, mm -hmm. you know, so that you're free of it, because you don't want to turn into that. Yeah. Oh, I'll, I'll never turn into that. I, I, I accept people for who they are, and I'm. Not, I'm not like they are. I'll tell you something. They don't even have minority friends. All their friends are white. Mm. You know, and mm. they, I've never heard them say anything racist, but they just remind me of, of classic racists. Mm -hmm. It's just, yeah. it, it's very... And oblivious. Oblivious is the right word, yes. Yeah. It, it's really, really sad. You pray, you just pray. Pray for them. Stay in the zone. <laughs> I was curious, what sign are you? Sign? Sign, you know, horoscope? Sign. Sign? Yeah. Oh, like Zodiac? Zodiac, yes. Oh, a Gemini. Me too. No. Mm hmm I don't know what it means, like, really. I'm not into it so much, but that's crazy, eh? 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 Yes. <laughs> That would explain, I, I think that if, even if you weren't Canadian, you would still be free-spirited, because Geminis are very free-spirited. Huh. Is it a, so it's a twin thing, and we have like a double, um, double thing? Yes. <laughs> I don't know. Yes. Well, we, we, you and I have both shown both of our sides during this podcast. We, oh, yeah? We have gone from being just very sweet to being very naughty um, occasionally dark, and then back to being sweet again. Hmm. And so hmm. this, this is the perfect Gemini podcast. Wow. So is it, and it's also because St. Francis, is it St. Francis, said those who sing pray twice. Yes. So there's something about two there, too. 
Yes. Well, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. I like you, Mr. Tommy. I like you, Pamela, a lot. You're a very fun lady. And I'm very envious of your husband because you are the gold. Oh, well, my husband is the best. He's wonderful. And you're a sweetheart. And I just, I can't thank you enough for inviting me today. I'm not qualified to be anybody's husband right now and stuff, but I would like to be your friend. Oh, thank you. I'd like to be your friend. I'm really glad. Well, we're friends on Facebook. Yes. So that's nice. Okay, so real quickly, okay, what's the name of your album you got coming out? Something Better. It's called Something Better, the Pamela Hodges Trio. Mm-hmm. And what, where will that be available on your Hodges, website? Actually, it's Pam Hodges Trio. Pam Hodges Trio. Yeah. And, and, that's, and there's four of us, which is another <laughs> weird thing. <laughs> Why could you call the Pam Hodges Quartet? Because we're trio in the third eye sense. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we were a trio, and then we've added a percussionist, mm-hmm. and we figure if we keep growing, we don't know, and we might. We're just, but we're gonna keep the trio name because you know we're just known as trio, mm-hmm. and we like the sacred idea of the third eye and the trinity and just so we're just hanging on to trio nice well Well, i hope the album is successful for you and you. you are always welcome to come back on to talk more about anything and thank you i hope you have yourself a great rest of your day and remain you know, being positive about your mother and that she will get through this. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you, too. Take care, Tommy. You, too, Pamela. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, there you have it. Pamela Betsy Hodges. Ain't she a sweetheart? Yes, she is. And I'm glad I got to talk to you today, Pamela. You are... One of Canadian, uh, one of not Canadian, one of Canada's finest. Um, if you like this video, everyone, please subscribe to my YouTube channel, add me as a friend on Facebook, join my Tommy Kovac comedian page on Facebook, follow me on Twitter and Instagram, and all that fun stuff. Well, that's all the time we have this week on Splat from the Past. Until next time, this is Tommy Throwback Kovac saying, "There's no shame in living in the past." Because the present sucks. Later, dudes.